What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Sean Lauer Show podcast. I have with me today Jason Portnoy. Uh, he uh, helps business owners uh, target their audience, increase revenue, dominate their market, and he's the host of his own podcast, uh, Perfectly Mentored, where he's had on tons of big guests. Jason. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. All right. Yeah, man. So, all right. So I was just uh, looking into you as I was going to have you on the podcast. And obviously, uh, the first thing I watched was your podcast with Gary Vee. Pretty cool. Especially because you were because you, you were because th- you were there. Um, yeah, I went to the office. Yeah. Yeah. So how how that all go down? How'd you get how'd you get there? So before I started the agency, I had a clothing brand, and I became friends with the head of Team Gary Vee, a guy named Andy Krenak, who happens to be a really smart dude. Uh, he's the head of Team Gary Vee, so he helps with all the brand decision around Gary. Um, and he was telling me, "Hey, Gary's getting into these things called Facebook ads." So that's what really got me started. I was like, all right, cool. I'll get into it. Andy really kind of uh, mentored me a little bit. And then we just became friends. And I was at the office saying hi to Andy and, and to different people. And Gary was there and just talking to a bunch of people. And it was, um, you know, he was telling people to start podcasts. So I said, cool, I'll start one. Will you be on it? <laughs> and everyone kind of looked at me and it was like, how are you asking that? I'm like, how are you not asking that? Yeah, bold. I right. So, so he's like, um, I'm really, really busy. So I said, yeah, no, I know I get you're busy, but you told me to start a podcast. I would love to have you on that podcast. Um, <laughs> this, wait, this, was, around- this, was, this was in person with him. Yeah, this was in person. Nice, face nice. Face. And okay. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, obviously, like whenever, whenever you're free, like, let's do it. He goes, I won't be till like next year. So this was like April. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Just uh, whenever you do it. So he's like, you're not going to take no for an answer, are you? Yeah. And I said, let me ask you something, Gary, if you were advising me, if, if you were advising me, would you tell me to take no for an answer right now? <laughs> and he's like, and he smiled. He goes, do 20 episodes and I'll come on. So it's very do, feasible. Yeah. Actually, he said, do 20 episodes and then email me, mm. which was like another blow off. So right. I went to his head of uh, business development. This guy at the time, his name was Alex. And I knew Alex. And I said, Alex, guess what? Gary said he'd come on my podcast. And he said, that's awesome. And I said, yeah, he said, do 20 episodes and I should email you to have it put on the schedule. Nice, nice. And he's like, yeah, man, let's do it. Um, did 20 episodes, emailed Alex, said 20 episodes done. Like I said, Gary said he'd be on. Next thing you know, I'm emailed with uh, two of Gary's assistants planning a time for me to come to New York in, 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 the, in the beginning of the year uh, <laughs> to, to go film. So yeah. That's so cool, man. That's, I love the boldness. And uh, you already had a little bit of an in being like at the building to start. Like, yeah. I mean, I love Gary Vee. I'm a Gary Vee head. I almost like, like him so much that it's like roll back around to just like, I'm annoyed by him that I like him so much. Or, like he'll say something. I'll be like, I was thinking that like, he just has such a, he's great. He's great. Like, do you get any, when you're, when you're there with him in person, like, is he as magnetic as he is on like on the camera? Is he have that high energy? Like, what's it like being around his close knit environment? Yeah. So it's, it's funny. Cause um, you know, through my work, through the agency, I became, I, I've, I've got to know a lot of people at, at VaynerMedia and this guy named Nick was in the kitchen right before I went there. And I said, Nick, any advice you give me on interviewing Gary, I want to ask him like questions that he, I don't want to ask him fluff. Right. I want to just do, and all, and I was nervous enough as it is like, I mean, I've interviewed uh-huh. some people, I did 20 episodes, but I'm still cutting my teeth on all this, still right. trying to figure it all out. And he, and he looks at me, he says, man, if you don't bring the energy within the first two minutes, Gary's going to check out and your interview is going to (laughs) suck. Have a good day and walked out. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, great. Uh, All I can tell you is it's the first moment in my life that I remember like being so focused and in a zone aside from playing sports, but like from a business standpoint where I was in the zone where like Gary pushed a little bit, he tried to see if he could get me like uneasy and, and, and off my game. I pushed back and it was an incredible interview. And I have like this clip of Gary saying, um, Hey, this was one of the best interviews I've ever done. And I'm I like, boom. Yeah, yeah. dude. I, yeah. I was listening to it yesterday and you definitely asked him like a lot of the questions I think I would have asked him. Like you asked him some really good questions. Like he, you asked him about people asking him about validation. Like he answers so many people, so many questions. A lot of times people are like, I'm doing this and this, like, what do you think about that? Like, and that, that's something I would have asked him. And also, He's so like repetitive. He repeats himself a lot. And he basically said, yeah, I mean, I'm answering the questions people ask me. These are the answers that I have. Um, 
I mean, I feel like I could do Gary Vee. Like, I kind of know, like, what he's thinking. But the other couple of things I like that he said was um, he's one of the rare people who has uh, an eye on the like, corporate world, and he also has an eye on, like, the small entrepreneur world. Uh, that was, an, I thought, an interesting take, and that, you know, is one of the reasons why his advice is valuable. Um, but I thought your questions were great. I thought it was a great interview. And he said it. I appreciate it. I, he that. Said Thank it. you. Have you ever heard him say to anyone else that was the best interview I ever had? Because then you would feel I, like you're, I, I, you're I have not. I have not. Uh, but you never know what he does behind behind the closed doors after he, after an interview. <laughs> but but no, it it was honestly, you know, like just going back to what you said. I, now that I'm putting out a lot of content and watching a lot of other people put out content, he was repetitive. But the greats usually are. They stick within their lane, and they and they go all in on what they know and keep saying it in different different ways. Uh, which, you know, some, turns some people off, right? Some people are just like, oh, I've heard this all already. I don't want to consume. That's why it's so hard to be a content maker mm -hmm. because you're going to put out content. You're not going to reinvent things. You're not going to say things that are that are drastically different. Um, but, you know, Gary's putting out the same thing. And eventually people are like, man, I know what he's going to say about this already. Right, exactly. Right? I, like, that's, when you can, like, that's when you can graduate from Gary Vee. Cor correct, but... On the flip side, you never know that the one, like he even said this in the podcast, and I agree with it, the 125th way that he says something may be the way that clicks for somebody and drastically changes their life. Of course. So as someone, yeah. as someone who does a lot of coaching and consulting now, I could tell you I say the same thing. Most of the businesses need to hear the same thing, but it could be the 119th time <laughs> that I say it to someone where it just clicks to them and they're like, man, let's go. I mean, that's messaging. That's messaging. Like a politician, they're all about messaging, right? They do their stump speech, like city to city, you know, go around touring. They essentially have like the same speech. They might pray to, play to the crowd a little bit, but that is like well-defined, like how you do this. And what do they have them do? Repeat their message. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I mean, if you have a message and you say it once, that's not enough. You got to repeat yourself in, in this world. Yep. Yeah, and that's exactly what they do. They just want to get that same message out over and over and over. Yeah, and then he'll get on like another another thing like NFTs. That's like his thing now. Yeah, so, so that's his newest. That's his newest yeah, thing is NFTs. Yes. Apparently, yeah. so then it like becomes like kind of interesting again. And and you know that's yeah. when he when he like he says when he goes into something, that means he's like all in. He's, he's researched on it. And uh, anyone that spreads a message, I mean, that's a great way to do it. Is become an expert on something, learn about something, and then just kind of repeat 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 and then get your feedback and learn and learn and you become like really knowledgeable in this as long and you're also helping people but he does have a special skill to kind of like and it might just be repetition but unlock like certain people that's just like all right let's go let's go but uh 100 percent. yeah yeah i'm definitely um i feel like i've I've graduated a little bit from Gary Vee, which means I got to go spread the message, right? Put it in a exactly. Form. Now, now it's on you to go out and, and deliver <laughs> the word. Do you ever feel like entrepreneurship is? It's kind of like nutrition in the sense that the principles are like basically the same. I mean, there's there's different industries, there's different strategies. I mean, I know you do paid adver advertising, which we'll talk about, and that's always like adjusting and different strategies. Um, but the message is kind of like stick with it, you know overcome challenges um and that stuff is so important it's just uh you just gotta repeat yourself. you just gotta keep saying it and um it's good to remind yourself too when you repeat yourself a lot look at, at the end of the day from business standpoint tried and true there's only three ways to grow a business okay and this was true a century ago this was true 20 years ago 50 years ago last month and 20 years into the future it's always going to be the same only three, three core principles in, in entrepreneurship. And then whatever you could think of, whatever hack, tactic, trick, whatever you could think of falls under one of these three ways. One is get more customers, right? So in order to grow your business, you need more customers or you need to increase your pricing, right? So increase the pricing. So option one to grow your business, more customers. Option two, increase your pricing. Option three is get your existing customers to buy more often. It makes perfect sense. And anything you could possibly think of to grow a business, there is nothing that falls out of those three. Right. Like there, there's only three possible ways you could grow a business. And those wow. are the three ways. So so if you want to like talk about how entrepreneurship's like nutrition, yes, calories in, calories out, eat yeah. healthy, do exactly. this. But yeah, you'll have different diets. You'll have cool mm -hmm. Facebook ads is the new diet that you're going to be on right now. Uh, it used to be SEO. It used to be whatever it was. Like that, that's what it is. But it falls under the get more customers part right. of things exactly right it's it's still there 
Exactly. It makes perfect sense. I love that. The three tried and true ways to grow a business. Only get, more, get more customers. Uh, sell increase more your, your pricing. Increase your pricing or sell more to your and, existing customers. And sell more to your existing customers. Dude, it's, it's, it's so simple. But I mean, that can apply to a service. That can apply to coaching. That can apply to selling any, products. Any business. Anything. 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 Wow. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so Jason Portnoy, Perfectly Mentored Podcast. Like, why is that the title of your podcast out, out of curiosity? Uh, it was to bring listeners in on my journey to get perfectly mentored. <laughs> I believe a lot in mentorship. Um, and, you know, a lot of the people I've had on are people I've, I've looked up to. Uh, Damon John who is a mentor of mine personally, who I've known for ye for years and yeah. is a good friend. Shark Tank? Yeah, yeah. When I had my clothing business, he was one of my first mentors and I used to meet with him quarterly. Uh, yeah, he's an amazing, amazing person. And then just all these different people, like, um, you know, I always wanted to get mentored in sales by Grant Cardone. <laughs> and none of these people are going to let you shadow them for like two months in order to yeah. get better. So podcast was a perfect way to do it. And then through that journey, I'm like, well, look, I'm asking questions for myself, right? Like a lot of the questions I ask the guests are questions that I have myself, which is why I get, think it resonates with the audience because I'm not looking to fluff or, or to, you know, really, you know, shine light on this entrepreneur on here. I'm here to pick your brain. That's yeah. it. You're, you're here. You're in here. It's the same questions that I'd probably ask for the most part. If you gave me an hour to come meet you in your office and have a talk with you and ask you advice questions, that's what I'm doing now. I think, you know, 130, 40, I, I don't even know where we're at right now, 140 episodes in, it's coming a little bit more towards the audience and, and trying to figure out, okay, well, how can I give the, like, you know, the audience something right. different? Because eventually you're running out of big names to have on the show <laughs> and you're, and no offense to the guests who don't have that name, but it's also like, how can uh, the listeners benefit also? Right, right. It's a natural progression. Learn for yourself and then make content and then help people with their journeys. And everyone's always at a, at a different spot. Um, so you said you believe in mentorship. Now, I never had a mentor or I never signed up for like a course or a class. I I'm doing pretty well in, in, in business. Do you ever read a book? I was just gonna say, so I listened to podcasts, read so many books, like essentially, do you believe a mentor has to be a person or can a mentor be podcasts and books and, and all these things that exist to us essentially for free a mentor could be anything that exists for free i mean um you know a lot of the greats a lot of the big names everyone's like i wish they would mentor me but everything they'd possibly tell you is on youtube right now yeah like they, they're they're putting out that content daily so it's there it's it's there but it's like no but he's not really talking to me yeah he is he's not he's not saying hey right. jim uh go out and do this right uh but at the end of the day like He's just streamlining it. He's saying it. Yeah. It's available to everyone. It makes more but sense I, for them I, to But do it goes that. back to the, the Gary question. Most people want someone that they could ask their question and get, and be proven right. Right. They, they want to, they want validation in what they're thinking. And oftentimes they don't get it. And then they search for the next person that's going to give them validation. I believe a good mentor, a good coach is not just, and I have business coaches myself. I have mentors yeah. and I have coaches, right? I invest in coaching. Um, I believe a good coach teaches you how to think, not what to think. Right. Um, and I think that's what's different. I think if you could read books and from some of the greats and look, some of the people who are dead, yeah. who wrote really great books back in the day. Dale Carnegie, um, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, they're better like, mentors than anyone you can have right now exactly. because everyone you learn from now, learn from them. Right. And they're just spinning a different way of saying it. Like so often... I, I'm trying to think of an example, but it just happened recently where I was reading this old book and I forget. I'm, so I'm trying to remember what book it was. I'm like, man, I heard this before. Yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, I found four people in the guru space that are saying the same exact thing. I'm like, man, this book was written in 1924 or something <laughs> like that. And I'm like, and, and it's tried and true principles just with a different take on it. Um, right. But there's no reinventing the wheel. Right. Yeah. That's when I started my podcast, when I was like reading, consuming, and I felt like, wow, I've heard all of this. Now I think the best way for me to keep it fresh in my mind, continue learning is to like discuss it, teach it to people and also like bring people on and like, you know, put two brains together to continue on these topics. And like, that's been great. I feel like that's the next level, but there's only so much eventually you have to start. So for the people who need validation, it's like, 
just have balls and just go for it. Like start and like get the validation from the market. You don't need to hear someone say it. It doesn't matter if they say it or not. You still need val validation from the market. Like just go you're, for it. Who cares? You're, you're right. You're right. And, and in the back of my head, I know that too, but it's human. You know, I, I'm, I'm putting out, I'm putting out something uh, right now where I'm actually writing all the copy for it. And it's yeah. like human beings are predictable. We haven't changed. Right. We don't change. We haven't changed centuries ago. The same things that drive us then still drive us now. Um, you know, we're, we're very predictable people. And I think there's a lot of things that go into that. And one of that is the validation factor. And I mm -hmm. think everyone wants validation. I think it's very easy for me to sit there and say, screw what everyone else thinks. Go out and do and do you. Uh, but that's why I think entrepreneurs are a little bit wired differently. Yeah, I um, self validate. You know, that's all I need. It, Correct. But look, I, but I'm guilty of it too. And, and, and I know what I'm doing when, when I ask a mentor a question, I, I love when they look back at me and they're like, do you know the answer? Or are you asking <laughs> me to, to or, or are you asking me to prove your answer? Right. And I'm like, I, I think I know the answer. And he's like, well, if you don't know the answer, go test it and figure it out. Right. Go. Like, so that's teaching me how to think versus what there, to think. Exactly. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think it's easier said than done. I think I think people don't right. want to make mistakes. I think people want want to right. do what's right, and and everyone and it's human instinct to look for a shortcut. And of a course. shortcut is, hey, Sean, um, should I do this or this? And then you tell me to do this. It's not just a shortcut, but now I don't own it. There's right, no there's right. no accountability on me as a person if it goes <laughs> wrong. It's Sean told me what to do. He told oh, me he's he validated. An idiot. He's, he's he, he told me it's his I would have been years ahead if I never met Sean <laughs> and he never told me this. He ruined me. He set me back. And and that's I think I think that's uh, another human nature is that we <laughs> we look for ways to to for it not to be our fault. And that's where the validation comes in. And that's where approval comes in, because we don't want that responsibility. We don't we don't want it all on us. It's a very stressful thing. It's a very that's why entrepreneurship is very, very lonely. It's a lonely right. journey. And I can understand why some people don't want to go through and it. Just, and, and, I can and, I, and I'll just be like, sorry, bro, you shouldn't have listened to me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, I, but, uh, but I mean, you shouldn't be giving advice if you don't know what you're talking right. about. But, that's, I, a but that's, be that's a different story. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'd just be joking around, but like, well, but the, but, the, it. but 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 it goes to a great point. People seek validation from people that don't even matter. Yeah. Like the amount of people I know who are like, man, I could do this, and my and my friends and family are buying it. I'm like, your friends and family are the last people yeah. you should be asking any sort of advice to because a they don't really want you to succeed. Right. Like, I'm a big uh, believer in this. I I yeah. love my friends. I love my family. I think my family does support me and want me to succeed. But it, it means you're changing. Right. And your closest people around you don't want you to change. And they also want to protect you. They love you. Your close friends and family love you. So when you're like, hey, I'm going to start this venture, it's risky. They don't want to see you brokenhearted. They don't want to see you get nose. They don't want to see you down. They don't want to see a lot of things happen to you, right? The world's a big, bad, scary place, and they want to protect you from it. The problem is they're not out there doing it. And they're the last people to sign on, but the first people after you do succeed, they're the first people they're saying, man, I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> man, I, I I believed in you from day one. I believed in you. I, I, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy with what you've done. Friends and family, if you're starting a business right now, they're the last people that you need advice from. The market, the people are willing to pay. I remember when I started my clothing brand, my friends were like, oh man, I love this design. Can I get one? Yeah. I'm like, would you pay for it? They're like, well, why can't I get one for free? I'm like, <laughs> And if no one's willing to pay me for it, scrap that idea. It's not right. that great. Exactly. Yeah. I like to look at it like, and I feel like this is, tell me what you think about this. Like there's this, this little circle that everyone needs their validation from. And it's like their family and friends and like everyone's stuck inside it. And they think that's all that matters. Cause that's their like feedback loop. And if you could just break out, break out of that little circle and just like see the world from like a bigger circle around it. Like you start to feel less embarrassment. You start to feel like, you start to feel so much more free because then you get a bigger feedback loop, a bigger circle of, of like-minded people. And it's just like so many people I feel like are held back from a long time. I agree with you hundred percent from their friends and family. I moved away. I moved from uh, Philadelphia down here to Charleston and I didn't know anyone. I just kind of like was starting my business and my friends were always asking to hang out. And that was kind of my way of like just breaking out of that breaking out of that like immediate circle of uh of friends and family and it's not that your friends and family aren't great like they, they they love you they do support you but like it's you have to like think a level beyond them 
to get in the right frame of mind to be an but they're not buyers they're not consumers they're not they're not they're not doing what you're doing and, and right and anything they tell you is like we meet with clients of this all the time and they're like hey yeah you know i showed it to friends and family and they all want in they all want to invest they all want to do all these things i'm like i'm like has anyone paid you for this yet and they're like right. no right. i'm like then you don't have proof of concept but like yeah my friends and family they're all willing to they're willing to throw money and invest in it i'm like you have no proof of concept exactly yeah. someone who doesn't know you willing to pay you money for your product or service that's the only validation like I, you know i i was harsh on someone one time I, I heard this and it was great but the only vote that matters in business is the credit card couldn't agree more got to type in those digits got to put in the, the code you know you got it's, uh, it's the only vote that has to say it's the only vote that matters it's the only thing that counts i agree i agree 100 percent. i love that so the only vote that matters is the credit card and that's an amazing feeling for an entrepreneur there's the one i think like deciding you want to do it getting that energy reading books and then to your first uh sale from somebody who's not your friends and family i feel like that's like almost level two that's like a an ex very exciting experience you're like look at the order and it's someone from state you never recognize their name that's a great feeling um and you're coaching yeah. right so you coach people yep tell about like your program a, a little bit yeah. So the market domination method really came into effect because, you know, doing this podcast and interviewing so many different people um, and talking to so many different entrepreneurs, I realized like there's, there's a, a blueprint to all this. Um, and it's not a unique secret that, oh, it's the market domination method and you have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to get this secret. It's, uh, there's no secret, right? Like I already told you there's only three ways to grow a business, <laughs> but um but what I started to realize is during COVID, we had a lot of e-commerce clients at the agency. And during when COVID started, e-commerce boomed, right? Everything shifted towards online. Clients were getting the best. We had the perfect storm of advertising costs dropped and oh, yeah. attention was at its all-time highest. So it was like perfect whirlwind. But clients didn't want to meet. They didn't want to talk, right? They're like, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm stuck at home with my kids. I don't want to have mm -hmm. meetings right now. I don't know what's going on. The world's ending. We're all going to die from this <laughs> disease and, <laughs> and whatever it is but just keep making us money or just keep doing what you're doing so i ended up with a lot of time on it and i started seeing a lot of people were sitting there saying man covid's been bad for my business it truly wrecked my business and i'm like oh cool cool i'm gonna give away three free one hour calls and just can talk to people and help mm -hmm. see if i could help them pivot not that i'm the the pivot king or i'm gonna turn your restaurant business into this online thing and make you millions if i could help i could help right like, let's have a conversation um and there were a couple of conversations I had where I was like, I was like, yeah, it's tough. I mean, restaurant, I don't know how to, like, I, gave, yeah. I, I gave them some idea on how to do it, on how to do things. But aside from that, like, it's tough, right? So um, I ended up doing, I said I was going to give it three. I ended up doing 15 because they were so, they were so amazing. That's 15 hours plus of my time. It, they were just, I, I felt like I was making an impact. Like we've yeah. scaled businesses from five figures to seven, eight figures. And it wasn't as rewarding as telling someone a common sense, common sense to me, common sense to entrepreneurs and marketers, like things to do and seeing their eyes like, like lighten up and be like, oh man, that's an amazing idea. Not that I'm a genius, but like, you know, common sense really isn't that common anymore. Um, so you kind of yeah, fell in love, just, you kind of fell in love with that. With I that fell in love with, it. I fell yeah. in love with it. I fell in love with helping people. And I'm like, cool. There's, a, there's a lot of people that could use it. I also started to see where advertising was going and i think that we didn't have enough I, I saw where agencies are going a lot of people are bringing things in house but they didn't have the right tools a lot of people were getting ripped off by agencies a lot of people weren't qualified to work with our agency which left them like either out in the cold on their own or falling victim to another agency that was just going to take all their money and and leave them bankrupt and they should never have hired an agency in the first place so i'm like well what can i do and i realized that one mindset of people in growing a business that all needs to be rewired and changed uh is mindset there is a scaling mindset um most people are drowning in a red ocean which means they're trying to like compete with everyone else and their eyes are so focused on what their competition is doing and not trying to build their own brand so instead of carving out with you know the term the blue ocean for themselves mm -hmm. they're drowning in a red ocean um they don't know how to how to create magnetic messaging they don't know how to make their product uh, desirable and how to speak the language of their clients. And they don't know how to distribute that message. Once they have all that, they don't know how to distribute it. And then the last part is systems, autom automations, and, and, and optimization. 
right? Like that's how you, those are right. the core pillars of really dominating your market. Once you can figure out your messaging and learn how to distribute it and then put it all and put a system in place, optimize it and then automate things, man, you're cranky and rolling. And that's really what the market domination method is really all about. And I was like, cool. All these people have this in common. They're all doing these things. Um, now let's, let's go change some lives. I love it. I love it. All right. Let me ask you this. Um, sure. Pitch me. This is a, a semi-selfish question, but, oh, wow. <laughs> but like, I'm trying to use it. Don't be like, sell me this pen. <laughs> no, I'm trying to use it kind of like that. I'm going to try to use it to, um, like learn about this. I, my business did under 6 million, just under 6 million sales last year. We have 17 employees. We do e-commerce. We sell clothing. Uh, I I've never used an agency before. If I'm thinking about it, like, why should I use an agency for paid media? I, I guess because that's your area of expertise, right? Yeah. So uh, I do. I do all my own Facebook ads. Uh, I do all my own advertising, paid advertising. Great. Who does it? Me. Me and I have a team. You're the that, you're the owner. You're the owner of the business, and you're doing all the advertising yourself. The paid advertising, yes. I I have a team that gets the pictures, does the content that I'm using. Um, but yeah. And, and as a business owner, you think that's the best use of your time is running paid ads. I, I, I admit I'm nervous to, to give it up because now I understand the mindset there and maybe that's, maybe that's what I need to learn. I'm nervous to give it up because like I, we have like promotions that end and then we have new ones that start. And like, I always have the timing down. I'll like wake up and turn some ads off at three in the morning. Like, uh, am I holding on to it? And, and, and Sean, why, why'd you start a business in the first place? Uh, I started business in the first place because I love like the growth mindset. And I love, honestly, I love having something to do. My answer is absolutely not to go lay on a beach one day. I never want to do that. So what, what's your driving, what's your driving motivation behind, behind doing this? Just something to do? Just, <laughs> just, pa just, pa just passing time? Essentially. Yes. Do you um, want to no. make money? Yeah, of course. I want to make money. I want to help people. I want to, why like, do you want to make, why, so, so why do you want to make money? Uh, so I can have a bigger scope, a bigger, a bigger, a bigger factory, help more people, hire more employees, have a bigger platform. And, uh, why is it, why is that important to you? Because I want to be remembered after I die. And why is that important to you? Because it's a noble cause. I think legacy is important, but why is that important to you? Because it's just cooler to be remembered after you die than to be forgotten. And we're all going to die one day. And uh, I just want to like have an impactful life that people remember, help people. I want to grow something big. I want to do something cool. I enjoy doing it. And it's, uh, I love, I love business. I love the struggles. I love the, the problems. So that what do you, what do you want? What do you want your, what do you want your legacy to be? Whew. Um, I want to be somebody who came from nothing, grew a giant business and like made a, a positive impact on the world and everyone around me. Uh, so your, your tombstone, you're okay with it saying here lies Sean. He grew a business from nothing. <laughs> you got me good here. Um, wow. I guess I need to like to, to, to rethink this a little bit. I mean, yeah, like made a positive impact on the people around him. I guess like that's why Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are going to space to like say they do something cool, like more specific, like, I don't know. I'm in the early stages, but. But you got me good. You got me good. I like this. I, I so, guess I need so, a better answer. No. So, but th this is because you don't really, you're, you're, we're playing pretend and you don't actually have it. But it, when, when you do have that and you, and you, and you're doing and you're, uh, or, or unless it's true, but if you're having that business and you're running all everything yourself and you're doing all the paid media yourself, I mean, like those type of questions become super important because no one decides, Hey, I want to start a business so I could work in that business uh, 24 hours a day. That's, right, I mean, right. no, I want to take it to higher yeah. levels. I want to focus people, on people, people like to work, but I mean, cool. If I pulled you out of ads, would you find something else to do? Of course, yeah. I'm sure we could scale. I'm sure we could scale. I'm sure we could scale something else. Yeah. Right. And there's always systems. There's always things that break. So that why question is super important. And we ask that why, why, why at least five times deep, because now I'll hit your real problem. Right. At first it was like, Hey, cause you know, I love, I love business. Then it yeah. was like, man, I, I don't want to be forgotten when I die, <laughs> right? Like you we see like there, just quick. that's three whys in and we could have gone further and it was such a different answer than, Hey, I want to start a business.
But now sure. that I know that, let's say you were going to tell me, well, because I want to be impactful. I started a business so that I could give my family the life they deserve and blah, 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 and, and, and all that. Well, great. You know, that comes with time, right? Is your use better off spent time? So let me get this right. You started a business so you could have more time with your family. That's right. Cool. Well, not me. Not me. I don't have. I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm with no kids. No, but I'm. I'm just saying. I'm. I'm playing this. This scenario for a right. second, right? I'll, you know, doing that. That's well, what cool. you wanted me to well, say, isn't it? No, it, it doesn't really matter because everyone has a different driving motivator. Everyone has everyone, and and it's okay. Like everyone has a dark side. Everyone has greed. Some people could be like, "Hey, oh, I just want a private jet. I've always loved private jets." <laughs> but if I went further on the private jet with you, chances are it's some sort of status symbol, right? Yeah, like it's, not it's in true. a bad way, but. But people like to sit there and say, I have a jet. And it's usually like a chip on your shoulder, right? If I went deep into people's lives, it would be like people told me I wouldn't amount to anything. So a private jet is my staple on the world that I that I amounted to something, which not a bad answer. I'm, I don't judge the answers coming out of your mouth, but I know it's not to own a private jet. Now I know it's respect. Yeah. Right now I know it's you were disrespected before and now you want respect now. But now you see in advertising, in delivering the message, we do this with any of the type of targeting that we're doing the inf the psychographics the demographics and understanding their desires because now if i read an ad saying hey do you want to make seven figures and blah 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 blah, i sound like everyone else but if it's like hey do you you tired of feeling like a failure at your family dinner party while your brother-in-law is crushing it and everyone's talking about his success and you feel like you're you know some guy's gonna sit there and be like yeah that's me at all the tables because people buy and people do things with emotion right Every decision someone makes, believe it or not, comes with emotion. And then they use logic to justify the decision. Bought an iPhone, right? Paid $1,200 for my iPhone. I, I needed it. I, it's the best. And then they spend time convincing themselves like, well, now that I have it, I could do this, this, and this for my business. It's technically a write-off because I could do this. That's the logic. But the motion already came. The mm -hmm. motion is I need to have a new iPhone. Mm -hmm. The logic was used after. So if you could appeal to that emotion, that's where I was going with you on the why. Once I could get you onto that deep thing, mm -hmm. then I could pitch you because I know exactly what your emotional decision making is. And then I could sell you emotionally. If I made it as like, logically, it would make more sense for you to outsource this so you could have time to run your business while I take it over for It's not good enough. Yeah. It's like, cool. But now still, why you? And right. still, why would I get let go? But if I could give you that emotional reason of why to let go and back it up with logic, that's the okay. winning combination. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I mean, essentially, the answer is to take that that job off of your hands. Um, but like, the way that you pitch that to get that to somebody, you got to figure out where they're at, and like that's where well, like, it, uh, it, human it, nature it, comes in. And and that's where I mean, most people get it wrong in sales, right? Most people go for the close way too early, and and you know they they meet that right. girl and they're like, right. want to come home with me? Yes, maybe one out of like every like. 50 will say yes to you and go home with you and maybe you'll feel like a winner but you're not marrying that woman anyways so that's not gonna be the right client for you anyways because they're gonna be the headache um but yeah i i think i think at the agency we probably kill more deals than than we accept mm. because i need you to understand everything that comes on board with this i'm not here to sell you i'm not here to take your money for three months that's not trust me a three-month contract is like a pain in the ass for us because right. We got to onboard you. We got to spend time doing all this. And then Learn. if you're going to leave after three months, we got to do it again for someone else. I rather clients that are going to stay for years. Right. So we'll, we'll work it that way. And if you could sign on and be like, man, I completely understand what he's saying. And we're, I'm brutally, brutally honest. I'm sitting there saying it's hard. You probably won't make like, they're like, but this other agency told me like, or they'll tell me I need a five X return. I'm like, good luck. That'd be great. And they're like, and the, and they're like, they're like, good luck. I'm like, you get me like, a five yeah. X return. I'm signing up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's and the they're like, well, and all that stuff. what can you guarantee? Like questions like that. I mean, so we'll kill more deals. One is I actually believe to be ethical and nice. And I've been on the other side of the table and been taken advantage of before in my, in my previous business. Uh, but the selfish reason behind it all mm -hmm. is I like winning records. <laughs> right. I like to sit there and say, we help this business. Right. It's a really, it's a really uh, bad stain on the business where you take on 20 new clients and you can't do anything with them and they suck and they all leave. And then you right. have to find 20 new clients. Right. Back to where you started. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Gr I mean, great stuff, man. Uh, like a little more tactical question. Like, do you guys sure. do, do you guys do the, do you guys do the, like the, the creative for the ads, the, the pictures, the videos, 
that, no, that's so, always that's always another reason yeah. I'm like some some I've talked to a little bit of agencies before. And they're like, yeah, we'll like make something for you. Like, I'm always I'm scared to give that up a little bit, like because that's our brand. We want it to have like our look. Like, is that something you guys do? Yeah. So I mean, I think I think your biggest problem is is not wanting to give things up. I mean, I, uh, I, I very I, very I, very hard to grow without without you know be you know, being being the guy the the, the main man. Um, on the sales side, I, I do have to work on that. On the operations side, I have operations manager. I have seventeen employees. I leave them alone, and I understand this important skill of, of, of having to just trust other people and give it up. I've done that over and over. I just have got to the point in my business where now I have like a three person sales team. We're just kind of trying to build like how we do the sales thing. So I am like kind of careful about about th those elements of it. The, the ads. Look, the it, 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 it look, it, it takes time and, and and I get it. I'm 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 a control freak myself. So I'm, I'm just I'm just messing with you a little bit. It's, <laughs> it's very hard for me for, for me to give things up. But I'm telling you, it's the most rewarding when you could actually give it up and and actually run the business as a CEO uh, versus being the guy who needs to be involved in everything. Uh, I think for me, and I'm not saying for you, I think for me, there's probably some deep rooted insecurity in it. Like if I hand it off, am I really the guy doing it still? Like, can I really yeah. say this? Um, that's really not it for me. Like I swear. No, no, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying so. So, I mean, yeah, that's why I was like tactical. So, so, like, tactical like, so yeah. So from the creative side, no, we don't creative is something I believed in for so long around five years ago, I was going to invest in a creative agency. Mm. Uh, there was a local creative agency. I believed in it so passionately that creative is the variable, um, to success. And I was like, cool, well, if I could have them on board and we could build this thing, then we have creative in-house. We have awesome videos. We have mm. top clients. The natural thing was we have clients that need creative and they had clients that needed distribution. Mm. So it would be the perfect fit. Ultimately, it didn't work out and it never did. Um, and I that's maybe one business thing that I maybe should have pursued a little bit harder. But nowadays, no, we don't do creative. Uh, I think we we stay in our lane. We're very good at what we do. We definitely advise on what type of creative we could definitely help. Um, and I think in house, there's so many ways where you could create. Like, like there's so many ways to run a lean operation these days. Um, like we we have e-commerce brands that are doing seven figures, and there are four people, yeah. literally four or five people, and the rest are like. Uh, like VAs or outsourced or outsourced agencies that are in as partners and lean very, very tight. I think that's, that's, that's the big, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's, that's actually the way to do it. Um, so I get not wanting to let go of the brand and, and outsource that to someone who doesn't get your brand and they deal with 180 clients um, and, and not do that. And we get that too. I mean, we ask our clients to give us the copy and the creative in the beginning so that we can learn your voice and your messaging like uh, and then earn your trust on writing copy. We'll give you suggestions and you'll be like, man, that's really cool. And after like a few months or six months, or depending if you're a real big control freak a year, uh, <laughs> you're like, you're like, cool. I'll, I'll let you guys write some copy that will approve and, and, <laughs> and, and, and look over. Uh, and, and, that, and that's what, and that's what we'll do. Cause at the yeah. end of the day, we, we, we see so many different brands. We know the type of messaging that needs right. to work. Right. So we'll advise at the end of the day, we know where we stand and we work for you. Um, and, uh, and you have final say, I love it. Yeah. I mean, the brand's important. So like, you know, something that you want to maybe kind of can't over little and then trust brand is a brand is important. But m most people take it to make it too important. Like, like Maybe I remember one, 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 no, one of my first clients, they had barely any sales and we used the wrong blue in one of their <laughs> posts and something. And they're like, that's not our blue. I'm like, you know, with all due respect, you don't have a blue. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, what if like what brand hex colors or whatever? I'm like, I'm, like, yeah, but I'm like, what if my what if my blue brought you a million dollars in sales? Would you switch your blue? They're like, yeah. I'm like, then you don't have a blue. Right. Why, why not orange? Why not green? <laughs> right. I like, it. I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, but change the, change the topic a little bit. something interesting. Uh, sure. Have you ever had any clients coming to you recently that are like college athletes? I'm actually interested in the new, the new rule changes that like college athletes can make money now. And it's kind of is like a, a totally new thing. You know, if I'm a D2 swimmer or if I'm the starting quarterback for Alabama, it's a different approach. But, like, what are your initial thoughts on the fact that college athletes can make money and, and should they be doing their own digital marketing? Should they learn about this stuff? Or are they too busy with practice? Or what's your first uh, kind of opinion on that? So I love it. 
I think, I think long overdue. Yeah, for sure. Um, too many people were monetizing them and making all the money on them while they had no piece of the pie. And if they got injured or something like that, they never had a piece of it. And for they sure. helped sell millions and millions of dollars of jerseys. So long overdue. Yeah. Uh, we don't deal with any clients like that. We have worked with some professional athletes in the past. Nice. Uh, none currently on the roster. But I will tell you that a lot of them are very concerned on building a brand, which they should. Um, and, and in terms of that, but results are the best way to monetize something. Be the <laughs> best athlete you could possibly be. Right. You're, you're like, a, you know, unless you're going to be the entertainer where you're like the fourth string player right. and you're never going to get drafted and you want to give the inside look of what's going on and help build a brand around that or give your commentary. So one day you could be a, a commentator or if you're going to be the like result, right? right? Michael Jordan didn't need to worry about how do I build my brand? His brand was built right. pretty much for him. The fact that he was a winner, Kobe, LeBron, all prime people who cared more about the results. And I think that's something I'm starting to learn now also is I'm a very big on building a brand, but I believe brand is built on the back of sales, right? So you could build a brand from here to tomorrow, but if no one buys it, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Your hex colors don't you matter build, if you have zero sales, of course. No, but if you could build a brand and you're doing eight figures, nine figures, a brand will eventually form from that right because you have a lot of customers you have a lot of people talking about you a lot of people buying from you that's the best way to build a brand yeah sell stuff i agree it's just funny from the it's funny from the college athlete perspective because like they're celebrating woo we can make money and then like six months later they check their bank account and they're like oh i don't have any more money i thought i was making money you still have to apply well, yeah but i mean principles. yeah you have to apply business principles you have to be like what am i selling i think a lot of a lot of them are going to rush towards really bad deals because mm. it's like Un uncharted territory for them um probably yeah but it's just good that like your jersey sells you, you'll get a you'll get a piece of that like uh, is that true shit, do, they, right? do, you, do you like i'm not sure i, I don't know I'm trying I, to learn that's, about that's it. not one th yeah I, I i don't know off the top of my head but i mean that would be a pretty stupid thing if it, if they still didn't get a piece of that and they i don't i don't they think just... they i don't think they do i think like the uh the the school bookstore will sell well i'm here right now saying that they should <laughs> so that would be like the school paying them out like i mean i think if they sign autographs they should get money for it i was listening to someone they were used to be a college athlete and they wanted to go on a game show completely unrelated to to what they were doing but they couldn't go on the game show because of these dumb rules like there's so many ways they've been held back now they can like there's maybe some little ways for like a d2 athlete like sign a couple autographs or do a little appearance or do like a a coaching lesson for like a couple a couple of kids in the school who are real big cameos, fans of the team. Things, cameos things cameos yeah. things like that yeah there's different levels for how how great you are now if you're you know the starting quarterback at Alabama maybe sign a deal i think i heard the guy already has a million dollars in sponsorships the quarterback for Alabama and he's only played one snap good um yeah good and for like, him it's a whole new good world good for him alabama's making billions so yeah right right let him make a million yeah yeah um yeah yeah I I'm I'm trying to like get get everyone's opinion on that topic because I'm something it's something I'm interested in and even when you were saying like vlog vlog your uh, your experience you know like I'm imagining the coach being like yo like put down that freaking camera we are down in the third quarter like stop vlogging you know what I mean like it, yeah it's don't vlog easy. don't vlog during the game but, <laughs> although that I would mean, be great content that but I mean the behind content. the scenes I'm sure a lot of people would love to know what's going on in the locker room what's going on <laughs> in the team playing what's what's doing this I mean. Yeah. Right. Right. There's things there. There's things there. But it's like they're already got yeah. homework. They got to do the playbook. It's like now you got to like build this personal brand and try to sell some swag. Like, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's so so now we're gonna cry. Now we're gonna cry because you're allowed to make money, but now it's hard to make <laughs> money. Got it. Oh, there's, there's no time. Right. Like so. I mean that. Right. They just sound like every other complaining entrepreneur. There you go. Entrepreneur yeah, exactly. that I've that that I've ever met. It was like. Man, I would be doing this, but I just don't have time. That's why I'm interested in it. Oh, all... you don't want to? Have, you don't have time, so pay someone. Oh, I don't want to spend the money. Yeah, I'm like, so yeah, you don't yeah. have time or money, but you want to grow a seven-figure business. Got it. It's honestly a when whole... you when you figure out how to do it, let me know. It's a whole new class of people who are young, smart, have a good life that now have to start thinking about entrepreneurship principles. It's like if they want to. I mean, it's like a only whole if they new, want to. Only if they want to, of course. Um, but I, that's why I think it's interesting. And maybe if I think about it more, talk about it more, like there might be some really good um, like little tactics in there, something like that. But it's a whole new world. And it's it's not often something like that shifts so big in a, a potential yeah. business thing. So it's, it's cool. It's something to keep my eye on. Um, what else is interesting to you in the world that's going on? 
<laughs> I mean, loaded question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I just honestly, I, I try to, I try to stay off of what's going on out there. I mean, I, when I think in terms of business, when the whole world goes left, I like to go right. Nice. Uh, you know, that's, that's something I've learned a long time. Um, honestly, I've, I've been as, as disconnected as I possibly can be from, from what's going on. Cause I've been so focused on what I'm doing. Um, you know, I think there was a great quote, uh, Tim Grover, uh, Tim Grover, one of the love tri- Tim Grover. I read his yeah, book. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Smart, smart, smart guy. And he said like, when you're, you know, losers, uh, focus on the competition, winners have the competition focus on them. Love it. Right. So, I mean, I think that's, that's it. I think so many times people are chasing what their competition is doing. Right. And they're doing all that when they totally, um, abdicate or neglect their own business. Uh, so I try to tune out as much noise as possible. I try to consume as little as possible now, aside from the podcast, when, when I used to be a big consumer, uh, uh, and if I can consume, I try to put into practice as fast as possible to see if it works or to see if I could put my own spin on it. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fascinating things happening in the world of marketing. Um, there's a lot of fascinating things happening in finance with NFTs and cryptocurrency that I know absolutely nothing about. So I cannot talk about it. I know zero about cryptocurrency. You seem like you're like a collectible guy a little bit with all those little toys behind you. Like is that? Is, These were just collect- my old, my own okay. action figures that I You're found. Not uh, cleaning. Keep no, them in the no, box, no, like, not- the for- like the forty-year-old version in that movie where he keeps them all in the box. Like you I mean, that. I tried getting into sports cards a little bit. I tried to bet on that, and and and, and I bought some. I have memorabilia, but aside from that, it's like no, I like I don't get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are the type of people get it. that those are the type of people like the Gary V's. Gary V's loves trading sports cards, trading little gizmos. Yeah. And and I, I don't get that. I don't get the NFT I don't, market. Dude, I think, look, I know, I, I, I know people sports cards are, are doing really well. I think sports cards well, are stupid. Can, may, maybe uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to invest, you know, my entire life savings into yeah. them and, 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 and gamble it. But, you know, I, I, I dabbled in it. I tried to buy players that I thought were going to rise and, and whatnot. Did Gary Vee convince you to get into sports cards? No, Dan Fleischman. Okay. I've heard that name before. I'm not super familiar. Yeah. So he has, uh, yeah. So he, he got big Gary was on it, but like, and then this guy, Sasha, who was on the podcast, he helped Gary with his sports cards. He taught me about sports cards. I tried, I bought some off him. <laughs> Either way, I don't get it. Now, of- now I stopped. <laughs> Now I stopped. It gave me something to do during COVID, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's, um, yeah. The NFT and cryptocurrency just never got into it. Um, yeah, I rather, I rather, I rather, I'd rather put, I rather put my money and invest in myself and there my business than, there you go. than, than some, uh, than something I don't know about than yeah. some art made by a 14 year old, <laughs> which will probably be worth $27 million, uh, one day. And I would have kicked myself in the ass, but I don't, I don't know enough about yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough. And NFTs are cool for the people who like those collectible things. If you like sports cards that, and you genuinely enjoy it, I think that's who like NFTs are for. It's yeah, I get it. Like but like I saw, like I could buy a moment in a game. I'm like, well, I could buy it off YouTube for free. Watch the same moment, put in a digital picture <laughs> frame. And now I also own the NFT. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Well, right, so I'm, it's not on the blockchain in that sense. I, I got it. I got it. I, I understand. <laughs> I'm not, understand I'm not begging that. it. I'm not begging it either. Yeah. Uh, if you're not paying attention, let me ask you this. This just happened today. Um, uh, you speak about Tim Grover and Relentless, right? And like that attitude. Um, you, you know, Simone Biles in the, the Olympics. The Olympics. Yep. Simone Biles, she's like the top Olympian. She actually bought three products from our from our store, United Monograms. Oh, wow. Pretty cool. But today, she like stumbled and had a bad round. And she like, she said she's not going to compete anymore because uh, it's like mentally too difficult she doesn't want to hurt the team um my first reaction to that was like oh my god like that's not what tim grover would tell you to do that's not like what a what a killer athlete does you don't throw an interception and then tell the backup quarterback to get in the game like um did you hear about that today or just happened and you said you're disconnected so i'm telling you i i didn't i did not um i mean i don't know what's going on in her head what personal things she's going through and 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 whatnot if it was just as bad as i had a bad outing and now i'm done then yeah but i mean usually elite athletes there's there's more to it than that there's more to it than than i lost i i mean if that's the case 
I've seen I've seen really talented athletes. They want they want the moment again. Exactly. Right. They want they want the moment again. So that's why I'm I, disappointed I don't know. Maybe, in her. That's why I'm disappointed. Look, I, you train. The Olympics is different than any other sport. You train for years. You yes. get your and for, for one like time a, a, a moment, years. a moment every four years you train, right? Like, and then if you mess up, I mean, all that training is done, and you have to wait another four years to get your shot again. So, so I could get the mental side of things a little bit, but I, 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 I don't know. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, there's more to that story <laughs> than she just uh, she just quit. Well, that's what it seems like now. So I'll put it on the record. Simone Biles, come back. You're the best one. You're the best one. It's proven. You have all the best numbers. Like, don't quit on your team. Don't be. Don't be like, oh, I had a bad outing. I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm just gonna quit. Like, uh, come back. Make a great story out of it. That's what I'm hoping. She's gonna come out of the locker room and go out there and win. And the then come on Sean's home. podcast and tell us why. You <laughs> exactly. Exactly. She's killing it yeah. too with like the. Uh, she does Oreo commercials. And um, like all this different stuff, she, I think she's one of like the richest Olympians from her promotion. So all the power to her for that. Um, awesome man! Like uh, paid advertising, like anything you see changing in the next ten years. Like, do you just like wait for the change to come and then just learn about it, or like do you try to predict ahead? Um, you can predict as ahead as much as possible, but like you can't predict Apple changing privacy policy. <laughs> but oh, yeah. but I mean. But it goes back into what I've always said of how brands need to look at how they look at attribution, how they look at marketing and how they build a brand and more of an omnipresent sense of in, in the sense of a way versus channel by channel. Um, that's something I said way before this happened. Now it's just forcing people to act a bit faster on it. Look, I, I think no matter what happens, it goes back to three ways to grow a business, <laughs> right? So you have to adapt. And there's a lot of people crying on the changes that are happening on Facebook man, you don't own these platforms. You don't own it. Right. You, you build your own list and you can do whatever you want with it. Right. When, it, when they're your own list, you can email them. If email stops working, you could text them. If text stops working, you can send them a letter in the mail. If the mail stops working, you can go show up at their houses. Like, like that's your own list. When you're putting it all on one platform, I think that's a very scary thing. And yes, Facebook has been the best. I do think we'll see change. I do see Facebook being too big to fail right now. I think they'll figure out a way around all this. They have to, uh, all the revenue comes from this. I still think that's the best advertising platform, but I don't cry about, about changes that, that happen. No choice, but to react. Yeah. Um, so I think in this line of work, you, you have to be a little bit of a, of a, a counter puncher. Yeah. So you kind of have to wait to be punched a little bit yeah. and see how hard you get hit and then punch yeah. right back. And at the same time, you have to not be afraid to throw the first jab. And and, and I think it's it's a it's a real um, fine balance and dance between between those two of being of being on the forefront and being the the agitator and being the guy that's going to go out and 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 aggressive style and and punch first. And at the same time, allowing yourself to be hit and being like, okay, I, I see where Sean's coming from 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 that punch. All right, that that one stung a little bit. I got to mm -hmm. watch out for that. Um, and then just adjust like you have no choice, right? Yeah, if the eyeballs are out there figure out how to get them figure out how to get a buyer thing And there's three principles. That's my favorite thing from you I never put it exactly so simple as you three principles. Let me say it one more time for the audience It's sell more. I, there might not be an order because I because I didn't memorize it I just take it. No worries. Go for it. Sell more to your current customers Sell more to increase, people. increase your, increase, increase your prices, increase your, er, yeah. So Wait, increase your average order value, increase your pricing or get more customers, right? Get more customers, increase your pricing or sell more to your current customers. Right, increase your buying frequency. It. Yeah. I got yeah. it. I got it. I got it. That's very, that's yeah. very good. Um, yeah. Any other final messages you want the audience to take home? Where can people find you? Where should they sign up for all your stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, the market domination method.com. If you want to be coached, it's a year long coaching program. It's hand holding to the max. It is me. It is not my team. There's two calls a week. There's a private community, not a Facebook group, a private offline community where you can ask any questions. I'm in there answering. It is me on teaching you how to build your brand. Um, then we have the agency, Jport Media, but I'm across all social channels at Jason Portnoy and super accessible so if you have any questions i'm there jason portnoy you're the man thanks for so much for uh, coming on the sean lowry show thank you everyone for listening and i uh, appreciate it man
Thank you so much for having me. All right. Peace.